And what is about that Ooh. time? Oh, let me get my janitor I think, keys. I think Are we we're live? On. I got them. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And I'm Mike. And today we got a really exciting video. So this is the 2024 Hyundai Tucson N-Line. But there's something very different about this year's N-Line compared to last year's. And it's what's under the hood. Mm -hmm. And a couple other things. <laughs> so the major change is the N-Line is now a hybrid. So this is great news if you're someone who's after a little bit more performance but a little bit more fuel efficiency. Yep. And this vehicle really brings the two together. You now have 226 horsepower with 258 pound-feet of torque compared to the 187 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque that the 2.5 liter of last year's model mm -hmm. had. So major upgrade. It's also at a feature at a great price point. So if you want to mention price point. $40,599 Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go through a full walkthrough of the interior and the exterior, show you everything that you get with this trim level here and answer some questions at the end. If you are new here, we do these videos every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we do them for a couple of different reasons. So, number one. Is if you do own a Hyundai or a Kia, uh, we're your go-to channel. For anything you wanna learn about your car, whether it's the design, performance, technology, convenience, anything, uh, come here and I guarantee you'll find everything you need. All right, and then number two is if you're in the market for a new vehicle, we definitely want you to add Kia and Hyundai to your selection list. These vehicles offer great value, they're really exciting to look at, very exciting to drive, and they're your best bet, let's be honest. <laughs> yes, and if you've chosen yes. to buy the best bang for your buck mm -hmm. um, in Ontario, and you live in Ontario, why not buy from us? We've got three locations, obviously Brantford Kia, we're here. Down the street, we've got Brantford Hyundai, and up north, we've got Owen Sun Hyundai. And of course, we'd be happy to welcome you with the um, enthusiasm that we have in these videos. <laughs> well, sometimes we're not that enthusiastic no, in these videos. No, I'm not gonna we're lie. not the ones meeting you all the time. <laughs> but today we are. <laughs> all right, so now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna yes. have Mike quickly grab the camera so we can show you how to join our live videos. So like I mentioned, live every weekday at 2 p.m. You can find us here, the Kia Hyundai channel on YouTube. From there, you definitely wanna hit subscribe because one, it'll make me so happy. And then two, we're so, so close to 100,000 subscribers. So that'll make me extra happy. All right, from there, as long as it's a weekday at around 2 p.m., you'll see we have a video that's showcased as live. All you have to do is click on it. It'll load you in like a regular YouTube video would, but there's a twist. And the twist is we have a live chat box right over there. <laughs> I stopped watching the Apple Live yeah, event I to know. come to this live Yeah, I saw that. Stream. That's awesome, Alan. Awesome. That is dedication. <laughs> I personally wouldn't do it. I'm joking. <laughs> We're really glad you're here. And lines to apples. Yeah. So here you guys can chat with us. You can let us know what you think about the vehicle, if you have any questions, and we can answer it live in real time. So let's get into it. Yeah. So brand new for 2024, like I mentioned, is what's under the hood. This is the big thing. 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. You also get a 44.2 kilowatt electric motor. So hence your hybrid component. Those are gonna work together to give you that 226 horsepower and that 258 pound feet of torque. Together with that, you also have a six speed automatic transmission and a regenerative braking system. So as you're coasting or going downhill, this vehicle is actually gonna build back some charge and slowly add more power back into your electric motor and turn off your gasoline engine. So range galore, or mm -hmm. I guess fuel savings galore. <laughs> so it's faster, yes. better pickup, yes. more fuel efficient. Yes. At 6.4 liters per 100 kilometer, I have to slide that what in. What more could a girl <laughs> ask for? Yeah. <laughs> um, now, one thing I could ask for is now for 2024, they've actually done away with the three additional colors. So this vehicle only comes in crystal white, like what we're shown here, as well as a black and a dark gray paint color. So if you like the fun red um, or the uh, greenish gray color, unfortunately, you can't get those in the end line. But don't worry, there's a lot of other fun, exciting elements. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so looking at this front grille, it's a dark chrome. It looks absolutely stunning. Very, very shiny. However, it's not too bold or flashy, not too too chromey that it looks like a Cadillac or something like that. An old <laughs> Cadillac. Um, for our headlights, we have a beautiful LED system with hidden daytime running lights. I'm gonna turn the vehicle on so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So right now, as Mike's showing it, it doesn't look like there's any lights there. No one would know until you turn on your vehicle and turn on your lights. Check that out. I'm telling you, I spot a Tucson and a Santa Cruz from a mi from miles away. Oh yeah. Like it's Again, we'll turn it off and turn them back on. There we go. Oh my goodness. It, it's stunning. So the design is phenomenal, but also the functionality. These lights are extremely bright. You also have high beam assist. 
So essentially, if I'm driving on a dark country road with my high beams on and another vehicle comes from the opposing side, my vehicle will temporarily shut off my high beams to not blind them. With great headlight visibility comes great responsibility. You do not want to be blinding <laughs> people. <laughs> All right, also integrated into the front of this vehicle, we have an N-Line exclusive front bumper, front grille, and front fascia. Fascia, oh my gosh, I can't speak. Um, so this vehicle is gonna look different from the rest of the Tucson's and Hyundai's lineup. It's gonna have a more sporty edge to it. Speaking of sporty edge, let's go this way. This is by far one of my favorite aesthetic parts of the vehicle, and that is these beautiful 19-inch alloy wheels. You do have our N-Line emblem right in the center cap. They look almost like a snowflake or a beautiful star or flower. A ninja star. A ninja star, there you go. Yeah, I'm making star. it seem so <laughs> dainty and light. So this vehicle looks, I'm not gonna say it, badass. Yeah. It, it's pretty good looking. Um, now, one thing about these wheels. Mike, do you wanna take it away? Yeah, they look great. They're, if okay, if you're a person that doesn't like to take time to clean your car and you're not tedious. Um, it's no problem. Yes, <laughs> but these are very tedious to clean. And I'm just gonna be completely honest. There's so many tiny grooves and I tried my best. <laughs> and it's yeah. raining today. Yeah, it's raining today, sorry. <laughs> so I tried my best, but these are rims you have to take your time with or you're gonna stub your fingers 50 times. Yeah. Um, with that being said, Michelin tires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> outweighs the negatives of cleaning your uh, wheels. All right, I'm gonna have Mike focus on our mirror for a second. And if our camera quality is good enough today, you may see our right blind spot there. detection indicator. So a lot of the vehicles of our past have an illumination in that um, indicator that lets you know that there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Hyundai took it a step further. This is standard on all the Tucson trim levels. It'll actually let you know if there's a risk of a collision and avoid said collision. So if I go to indicate a left turn and there's a vehicle there and I still try to go in, my car will revert me into my originating lane, avoiding said collision. Now, once we're still here, I'm just gonna revert back. Um, <laughs> we do have an N-Line badge on Boom. your flare there. I will, speaking of flares, uh, check around the wheel wells. I do quite like what they've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to learn better phrasings. Um, and then for our doors, we do have Hyundai's classic parametric design. So a lot of lines on this body here, giving this vehicle a lot of modern edge to it. It doesn't look boring. It's not bubbly. It is sharp. It is sleek and it is sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, it is. moving down again, we do have our fuel door right here. So you may think with the turbocharged engine or a hybrid powertrain, do I need premium fuel? You do not. So regular and leaded is still fine with this vehicle. For the rear end here, we do have a beautiful, beautiful rear windshield. Mm -hmm. And you may notice, where is our rear wiper? It's tucked under here. So above or just underneath our spoiler, your wiper will sit. Um, this protects it from snow, mud, dust, dirt, squirrels, birds, everything. Ice is a big one for sure in Canada. So no more scraping on your win window wiper itself. It's tucked away for use whenever you need it. Another great thing on this vehicle is a power lift gate. So with Hyundai and Kia, we have this great feature called a smart power lift gate. This allows you to walk up to your tailgate, stand here for three seconds, your vehicle's lights will flash, it'll beep at you, and then it'll power open. So open automatically without you doing anything. You don't have to touch a key, you don't have to touch a button. You can totally turn this off, and we always do, just so we don't have doors opening all the time. But this is great if you have kids or if you have pets or you always have your hands full. You don't have to drop your groceries, drop whatever it is you're carrying. You can just walk up to it and let it open for you. All right. That was a lot of words. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> Back here, we have a ton of space. So the Tucson is a five-seater here in Canada. Each of the rear seats do have a car seat anchor and tether, um, and there's an abundance of space there, but we'll get into that in a second. You can easily knock down the seats by using these levers, so conveniently located on the left and right side. You give them a pull and they'll go down. Now it does go down a bit more flat. I'm just gonna make sure nothing's blocking it. There we go. Perfect. There we go. And it locks in, right? Yeah, it locks in Perfect. so you don't have to worry about it flying back if you hit the brakes really hard or anything. Um, tons of room back here. It's almost completely flat. So if you wanted to sleep in here or just put a big piece of furniture or anything in here, you totally could. No problem. Under the floorboard, we've done away with the spare tire and we now have a tire mobility kit. There is also a good amount of storage space just underneath the floorboard. And if that's not your thing, you can remove this floorboard and drop it down a level. Oh stuck on my side to give you an extra couple inches no. of space so great if you really have to fit in as much things as possible into your vehicle on the side right over there we do also have a little storage pocket I guess the left and right side and there are clips for a cargo net you do have a speaker back here as well 
and a 12 volt on the left side. While we're looking at the 12 volt, you can see there's also a light to illuminate your cargo area, making placing things in here at night a breeze. This button up here is going to allow you to power close your tailgate, lift gate, I should say. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> and then while we're back here, let's take a look at the rear end. We have these beautiful LED tail lights. I love this design. And then something that's again, exclusive for the end line is this single twin tip exhaust. So on your right side, got these beautiful exhaust pipes. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't have a very powerful gurgle or nope. um, pop noise, but they're nice to look at. Um, you also have a hybrid designation on the right side as well to let everybody know you got the hybrid end line. All right, let's do a quick walk around and I will meet you at the driver's side, Mike. Okay. <laughs> All right, again, continuing on with the sporty theme of the end line, we have a cloth and leatherette mix on your seats with some red stitching and piping along the seats themselves. Both your driver and passenger seat are heated. You get three different levels of heat for both seats, and you also get a heated steering wheel. While we're on the topic of a heated steering wheel, let's take a look at the steering wheel itself. Sorry, Mike, I'm gonna make you go sure. back in there. This is by far the best steering wheel design that Hyundai has, in my opinion. Take a look at those touch points or those spokes. It is so comfortable to drive with, and you may never think about steering wheel comfort. That is until you've driven a Hyundai with this wheel you will never look at steering wheels the same way again. Well, that <laughs> freakishly turned out well <laughs> when the camera turned. Oh, weird. Um, again, <laughs> some little details I wanna to touch on. I might just grab that from yeah, you, sure. Mike. We have an N-line badge right in our um, upper back area, neck area. Some more red stitching on your headrest, which ties it in quite nicely. And then there's the cloth pattern, the stitching pattern, and it even translates to your center console. All right, we'll take a quick look at the crash pad here. <laughs> There's a lot going on, I promise we'll get into it, but I just wanna point out the little end detailing. So yeah. you saw it on the back of your seat, you saw it in our crash area. Now take a look at our steering wheel. On the rims too. The rims, of course, and our carpets. All right, while I'm down here, I might as well go over the seat controls and I will sit down in the seat <laughs> to show you. Don't mind the dirt. <laughs> Um, we do have a power seat for the driver, so you can raise and lower it, as well as tilt it if you want more of an angle. You have your backrest adjustment, so again, tilt or angle, and then lumbar support. All right, Mike, here's the camera. I'm gonna hop in. We'll talk about the door real quick. And if you've seen any videos I've done on the Tucson, you know there's one thing I'm definitely gonna talk about, but I won't do it first. All right, down here we have our Bose premium sound system. So both the N-Line and the Luxury Hybrid come standard with Bose. Bose is by far one of the best systems that Kia and Hyundai use. I absolutely love it, and you will too. We have eight Bose speakers in this vehicle, so everybody gets a good feel for that crisp, clean audio sound. Now up here, we have some piano black casing around your window controls. You have express up and down windows with obstacle detection for both the driver and passenger, as well as your mirror controls. And then another thing I really like, um, most of the other Tucson trims have a kind of chrome style for their door handles. This has a blacked out chrome, so yeah. it's still shiny, but it's dark. Hides fingerprints a little bit better, a little bit. <laughs> and then up here, this is my favorite thing about the Tucson. This body panel or door panel extends all the way across the entire cabin, transfers into air vents, and then again, transfers back into a sleek door element on the passenger side. So it goes all the way around. Little things like that really make me happy, really make this driving experience feel very, very luxurious or sporty, if you will, on this trim level. All right, Mike, you wanna join me on the yeah. passenger side? All right, speaking of an amazing experience, one thing I absolutely love, again, there's so many things I love about this vehicle, but we get a panoramic sunroof. So it extends all the way to the very back seats. Now the glass panel itself will stop it around here, but still it is so wide, so long, truly opens up this entire cabin. And then with a black headliner, I can find sometimes it really makes the cabin feel dark, which may make it feel a bit cramped. The sunroof kind of cancels that out. So you get the illusion of space, open air, and then you can close it and have a more moody or dark sporty cabin. So whatever you like, you can have them both going on at the same time. 
Well, I guess you can't really stop the cabin or the headliner, <laughs> but you can always open or close your sunroof. All right, Mike, hop on. <laughs> hop on in. Hop on. <laughs> hop on. <laughs> Let's go for a ride. All right, this is a brand new vehicle, so I'm just going to skip the uh, driver setup. There we go. <laughs> um, another thing we have in this vehicle is dual 10 and a quarter inch displays. So in your center area here, encased in the lovely and uh, very controversial piano black, we have our touchscreen with built-in navigation. New for our hybrid, we have a hybrid menu, which allows you to see your hybrid components of the vehicle. So right now the vehicle is not actually on, it's just the electrical system. But you can see it's drawing power from wherever it's drawing power from. So we're um, hybrid systems on as well as our gasoline engine. When I actually turn on this vehicle and start driving, if a majority of the power is coming from my gasoline engine, you'll see it triggered here. It's going to have this orange light illuminating powering the drivetrain. Now, if we're coasting or regenerative braking, you're going to see a lot of power going back into your battery right over there, so your electric motor. This is going to allow you to see what's happening to your vehicle in real time, things that you can't actually see unless you're a mechanic looking into your vehicle. So kind of help simplify it. I really like showing this to new hybrid or new EV owners. It's really, really helpful. You also have your fuel economy average. Now I promise this is not really what it is. Um, this vehicle, again, it only has 16 kilometers on it. It's mostly been at an idle, so it has not been driven much at all. So that's gonna be what you're idling at or just when the vehicle's sitting and not moving, but everything else is on. So, Mike, do you have the rated fuel efficiency? 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers. 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Yeah, city and highway, which is crazy. <laughs> yes. So, for an SUV of the size and with this much going on inside it, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, depending on how you drive, you can see those numbers be a little bit better or worse. <laughs> you got to think of that, like how impactful that is. The new N line redesign is hybrid, so it's mm -hmm. faster and it's like super super fuel efficient compared yeah. to last year's. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> they did a great job with that. So the end line last year was still great, but yeah. it lacked the increase of power. And now we have the power, but we also have the efficiency. So there's no real trade off. Cause usually when you get great power, you grit, you get. Yeah, less fuel efficiency. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? think it's awesome. Now we get both. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome they did that. <laughs> All right, so let's go into a couple more things on this menu here. I won't go too, too in depth because we can do a separate video on that if you're interested in it. But we have some great features like a screen for your climate control. This will allow you to turn on some of the automatic features like automatic defog or your dehumidified, which is fantastic. Um, you can also have your vehicle recirculate the air once you apply your washer fluid. So a lot of people don't think about that, but if you're reusing the cabin air, you're not taking in that fresh, stinky, smelly, chemical-y air. And then after a while, you can go back to your fresh air. You can also see what's going on with your um, climate. So let me just turn something on. I will turn on my heat, which I know I shouldn't do, to 40 or 24. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, you can see on the screen, we now have it on. You can also see if it's synced, if the AC is on, and then what your fan speed is. The actual controls here, um, or here is where you'll actually control it. So you can turn it off, you can turn on your automatic climate control, you can sync or unsync the passenger, and change your fan speeds. Let's just turn that off for noise levels though. Um, just above that, we have some more screen buttons for things like your volume, your map, your navigation menu, and then of course, seek and track radio media options. Um, the one thing I mainly use this for is setup. So when you press your setup menu, it'll take you to the screen that allows you to change things like your safety features, if you wanna turn something off, if you wanna change the sensitivity or the volume levels, you can do that all here. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is the ambient lighting. So this vehicle is equipped with an ambient light system. You may see a little bit of a blue yep. tinge here. There, and on the side here in that little mm -hmm. pocket. Even on the doors. Where you could put your phone, I know we talked about that last time. Oh, let me get this angle. Sorry, and Mike. There. Yeah, we can get it all. Perfect. So if you're a fan of this or if you're not a fan, you can turn it off, you can change the intensity, and you can change the color. So Hyundai gives you a couple of preset options like this polar white or the jade green. My favorite thing is to go to this set custom color and choose whatever you like from this color wheel. And you'll see it changes your lights and changes the entire mood of the cabin. This is obviously more dramatic at nighttime, um, but again, a feature I really, really like. And if you're looking for a sporty, bright look it really opens up mm -hmm. or brightens the cabin makes it more fun in here all right speaking of fun in here <laughs> um yeah. let's talk about some of these buttons over here so they may not seem that fun but i promise some of them are so heated seats and heated steering wheel are a lifesaver if you live here in canada 
Um, the heated seats work very quickly and with the cloth seats, it allows you to kind of seep into your seat while still having a good amount of support. The heat will penetrate into your back and give you a nice warm hug feel. You may never want to leave your car again. And then for your heated steering wheel, it allows you to have nice warm hands without wearing gloves, meaning it is super easy to use your screen as you are in your vehicle. You don't have to yeah, wear gloves in here. You also have downhill braking assist, a quick camera to press, and it'll instantly show you what is in your camera view, a quick button I should say to press. And then to the right, we have our passenger heated seats. Right over here, this is where the fun comes in. So this is your drive and terrain mode select. Right now you can see drive is illuminated in orange. That means that when I use this toggle, it's gonna cycle me between my three different drive modes. I have eco, sport, and smart. And not only does that change your digital gauge clusters dials, it changes the way your vehicle responds to input. So eco mode will be a tad bit more sluggish, but by no means is this a slow vehicle or an underpowered vehicle. Um, it will have better fuel efficiency though, again, depending on how you're driving, it's going to gear the vehicle to be more fuel efficient. Now, when I put it in sport mode, it does the opposite. So it's gonna hold gears longer. It's gonna be more sensitive to input on the throttle. It's gonna stiffen up your steering and just make your vehicle much more responsive and dynamic to drive. And then smart mode just adapts to what you're doing. So if I'm driving regularly in the city, it's gonna be in an eco mode. And then if I floor it to pass somebody or to get onto the highway, maybe not floor it, but you know, you know what I mean, ask for more power, it'll temporarily switch me into sport mode and then again, cycle me between said drive modes. Now, something that we get here in Canada on our all-wheel drive Tucson models is terrain mode. So when I press this button down, it's gonna illuminate in terrain, and then I'm gonna use that toggle again to cycle me between snow, mud, and sand. This is gonna change a couple things. So mainly your all-wheel drive torque distribution, your electronic, sorry, I'm running out of breath, our electronic stability control, and just the way the vehicle responds to, I'm gonna say the word again, slippage. I should have said <laughs> wheel spin, but slippage. So yes, your vehicle will um, gear itself better to handle said conditions. Now, this vehicle is a smart all wheel drive system anyway, so let's say I veer off the road into a gravel road or a muddy road, the vehicle will adjust as needed to give me optimal control. I stopped myself from saying that word again. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, right over here is our actual gear selector. So this is not your traditional automatic transmission where you know you have your gear shift, you drop it down into reverse or whatever. This is a shift by wire. So as long as my foot's on the brake, I can select between my gears, throw it into drive, neutral, reverse, whatever I need. While I'm in drive, I also have the option of using these paddle shifters here, so on my steering wheel, to upshift or downshift my gears if I want to do so. And line badge again, our electronic parking brake, and then our auto hold for our braking system. Auto hold is going to hold you at a complete stop until you hit the gas again. So this is great for long, busy intersect intersections, stop and go traffic, and uh, waiting in the drive through. Um, before we hop into the back, I'm going to grab that again from you, Mike. I like the color too. Same thing like the door a little bit. Oh, how it's a dark, yeah, a dark, dark chrome and a satin chrome. All right, I'll take a quick look at our gauge cluster. So it's going to give me that warning because I have the vehicle running with no engine, but I mean, the engine's still here. It's just not on, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, so we got more red stitching on our steering wheel, our volume and driver's convenience controls. So phone, uh, voice commands. Then on the right, we have our driving assistance, our smart cruise control. Did you guys see Pat? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Pokeru made an appearance, but no, he went fast. <laughs> All right, so um, this is for smart cruise control. You turn it on with this button, set the speed with these toggles here, and then set the following distance. This works all the way up until stop and go traffic. And from there, it'll, again, take you to a complete halt and then get you back up to speed once things start flowing again. Gonna close this. We'll take a look at the back and then answer some questions. I'm Pat totally we losing done. my voice. Yeah, I think Pat thought we were done. <laughs> <laughs> then he noticed we were still going. All right, I always forget I bring the seat down. Here, I'll pull the lever and, oh, see how it popped up? Whoa. That's convenient. Whoa. Oh, sorry, I didn't let go You of almost it. took my head off. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so back here With the again. dull plush cushion. <laughs> yeah, um, I wanna say these seats, super comfortable. Yeah. Um, this is my first time sitting in the 2024 seats. Uh, the cloth inserts really, again, allow you to kind of sink into the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like you're becoming one with the seat. You're still, being 
um, but super, super comfy. And one thing I absolutely love that a lot of manufacturers miss on this, the rear passengers want style and design mm -hmm. in their seats as well. In Hyundai, they included the red stitching, they included the same leatherette accents on the side that's in your front seats. So no one's missing out on style. Each seat looks great, each seat's comfortable, and each seat is the best seat in the house. Even on the door, right? Red yeah. stitching still. You still get that um, line. on there, yeah. So that beautiful dark line that extends all throughout the cabin of the vehicle comes into the back as well. That is cohesive design. <laughs> all right, so while I'm back here, I'll talk a little bit about what else is here? We got our rear air vents. So again, you can change the direction and change the amount of pressure or I guess circulation. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a better word for that, but don't tell me what it is. I'll just feel bad. <laughs> All right. And then down here we have two USBs for charging. So your rear seats, or at least the passengers that are sitting in them, should never have a dead phone. I'm surprised there's no USB-C in it. Yeah. Anywhere. Well, I mean, most people still have USBs, yeah, right? I'm still surprised. It would be nice to have USB-C, though. One, at least. Um, back here, we do have mesh pockets for the driver and passenger seat. And then in the very center, we have our drop-down section for a cup holder or armrest if you don't have anybody sitting back here. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, That's lots of room, as usual, lots of room. Yeah, Head lots of space. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier is the lights inside the vehicle, other than the ambient lighting, are still LEDs. Yeah. So this may not be super, super impressive right now, but at nighttime, they are very, very bright, allowing you to see anything you may have dropped in your vehicle, or if you, I don't know, if you just feel like turning them on, you can, you can see everything. Yes, quality, it looks better. Quality, LEDs look better. It, it's very, very bright. All right, from there, I think we'll answer some of your live chat questions and uh, see what you have to say about the Tucson. Oh, I'll talk about some more uh, standard features. So this vehicle has forward collision avoidance for pedestrians, cyclists, and of course other motor vehicles. This is going to use your front radar sensor as well as a camera that's located in the windshield. So I don't know if we can reach it. I got it. There you go. So that's going to monitor what's going on ahead of you. It's going to keep you in your lanes. It's going to keep you at a safe distance from the car ahead of you with your cruise control. And it's also going to warn you if there's a risk of a collision. So on top of the warning, if you fail to react, the vehicle does have the capability to break for you to avoid said collision. So you get collision avoidance on the side from your uh, turn signal indicators. You also get it in the front and you get it in the rear at low speeds when you're reversing out of parking lots. Okay. Let me close, I'm gonna close the hood. So that oh, can, thanks. <laughs> so that it looks, <laughs> people can at least see how it is without it open. I think I spoke a lot today. I might need a, to oh. ban myself from talking. I, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll get my screen to sync up to the TV again. I don't know why it stops doing that. Um, and we'll scroll up to the top to see what we missed at the beginning. Either my laptop died or, no it didn't. Okay, Dale asked, how are the track videos coming? So I've spent all day so far editing that video and that's actually why we started a bit later today because I was, I was so into it. I didn't really have time to help Mike prep the car and we were a little bit behind. Um, but so far it's looking pretty fun. I always prep the car, <laughs> like yeah, mostly. Yeah, but I help. <laughs> I know, but you know, I like to do it. Um, Give you time to study it. To, to study, yeah. Uh, um, so this video we didn't study at all for, really. No. I just kind of... We winged it. Everything we said was made up. No, I'm joking. Yeah, you I'm might joking. have to fact check everything <laughs> I said in this video. No, I'm joking. It's right for the most part. Um, and mine's not the top trim. I'll answer that right off. The back, yeah, the it's, ultimate. it's not the top, yeah. um, the ultimate is. It used to be the top trim level when it was just gasoline, but uh, since they've introduced hybrid and our you, ultimate. You know what though, I'm not even going to put in that category because anything N N line is kind of like a separate sporty category, yeah. in my opinion of the trim, right? Because you're going to get a whole different look. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take away things from luxury to ultimate really, it has kind of its own features. Um, James said, this car is amazing guys. Did you guys see the new Sonatas and Elantras yet? We just got our first shipment. So we have not gotten them at our dealership yet, but me and Charlotte were at the um, Drive Festival this past weekend, and in Hyundai's booth, they did have a 2024 Kona. It was still a pre-production model, so we're not sure exactly 
what will be transferred onto the units we get. Mm -hmm. um, and I do know that the color that they showed was a wrap. It's not an actual production color, so. I know what I was asked to start featuring it, let's say articling it, so it's coming to our dealership soon. Um, I saw a question up there <coughs> that compared this. Someone asked if it's better than the hybrid luxury. So again, see the beauty is, is that it's kind of what kind of person are you? Because it's the same exact same price. MSRP comes in at the same price. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did, the hybrid luxury last time, correct? Yes. Yeah, so it's really what do you want, right? Do you want something yeah. more sporty or do you want something more luxurious? The good news is you're just gonna pay the same amount. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of cool. And I will say the luxury hybrid does have some benefits. Um, compared to so they they're the same price but the luxury definitely looks a bit more luxurious while yes. this one has a bit more of a sporty flair to it and it totally comes down to what do you like yeah. because now there's no real fuel efficiency benefit to the same powertrain same vehicle in its heart just different appearance mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which one did you go with I, mm, I think this one yeah <laughs> i go in line i go in line it just I, th I, I like it i like the little n the badging, yeah. and I like how they took the, the H away from the wheel to throw that. It's just like these little things, even when you're in it, right? There's a little N here. It just reminds you, like, hey, I'm yeah. in something a little more sporty. I'm in something a little sporty, yeah. yeah. Something a little fun. And uh, truly, the uh, 1.6 turbo on our hybrids is fun to drive. Mm -hmm. You may think hybrid. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Not no fun. fun. You're wrong. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. It's a sleeping, speedy car, right? It's quiet. It takes yeah. off. Like, it's, it's awesome. I had fun driving it here. Yeah, no, it's yeah, super it's just, funny. I just drove down the street, but maybe hence the 14 point something liters per 100 kilometers. Um, let's see. I can email you all the pictures. Yeah, if you want to email it to us, my email is gabby at brantfordkia.ca. G-A-B-I and Gabby. Did someone say happy? My birthday was like August 29th. It was a while ago. Uh, but thank you. If that's me, if that's the mic you're talking about. Uh, Anthony said, just joined. Does this come with the traditional shifter or the shift by wire? And it is a shift by wire, but you do get um, paddle shifters. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hey, co workers. Probably work at a dealership too. Oh, right. cool mm -hmm. dude said, why is Hyundai moving into using the single panel dual screens like in the Elantra in the new 2024 Sonata? I much prefer the look of the Tucson and pre facelift Sonata where the two screens are separated. And that is a great question. Unfortunately, I, I, don't, I don't have the answer to it. No. Um, <laughs> I do know a lot of people are with you though and do like having the appearance of two separate screens rather than one giant screen that's actually two screens. If I had to guess, I mean, we're not, the only, we're not the only brands doing it, yeah. right? You could see a lot of other brands doing it. So I think it's, I don't know, maybe, maybe more people like that, you yeah. know, because if, if it was just our brand or Kia or Hyundai, maybe we could answer that question or find an answer. But I see it mm -hmm. kind of across all brands happening. So maybe it's just, you know, the wave, the direction everyone's going in and mm -hmm. maybe the majority of people like it. I personally like it. I don't mind it because I like how they have it on an angle. So you don't really see it sometimes when we're filming, but it's a little on an angle. So it's very driver focused. Um, so I, I do like it a little, a little wider like that. Um, Adele said, I got 4.5 liters per hundred kilometers on my Sportage, mostly city driving. Love it. See, you are the, the model that we should be using. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Real world, you can have it like much, much lower than what Kia or Hyundai post. Um, but again, of course they have to have an average. So, yeah. Yeah. The Reebok classics. Those are pretty much the only running, sh uh, the <laughs> only shoes I wear. Someone just said, Joseph, I think it was Joseph, cute shoes. Oh, I was wearing those to the drive festival. I love Reebok classics. Yeah, These ones are my everyday kickers. I wear them to work, um, but I've got a nice little lineup of them very boring my closet looks very boring mm -hmm. um adele also asked how do we bring the rear seats back up and it was answered but essentially on the side so both on the left and right passenger door uh, there will be a lever that you can pull actually why don't i show yeah you? exactly just pretty much standard right my, I, I might make you show it yeah might as well so basically when those seats are down right that you saw how it clicked in, so just bringing it back up will bring it back up. So again, you know, it goes down, it clicks in, but you can't just pull it up, you have to unclick it. Yes. Boom. And then it also reclines it too. Ooh, that recline is pretty far. Mike, do you have any timeline for these vehicles? 
availability of these vehicles. Yes, timeline. Like how, on average, what's the wait time like for? Okay, so, hmm, with these, okay, we've had people order them. Obviously, a bunch of them are sold. So, um, but that was pre-order. That was about a year. So we do have. We might not because this was like two days ago. Uh, several of them actually available, but we are getting Tucson's in frequently. I would give these about six months, right? And and that's just an educated guess, a semi-educated guess for me. Ask me in two, three weeks when everyone starts ordering them and I'll get a better idea. Um, but the, we've got a, a ton in. We got like, what, over 10 in? Um, but those are pre-orders uh, and those are just some obviously Hyundai sent to us. So I would say six months, let's go, you know, it's a hybrid, right? So yeah. the more popular they get now, you know, I could be telling you a year in a month. <laughs> There's a question from Rody. Why not read this question? Why Kia and why is Kia yeah, and Hyundai users. users reporting many issues in their cars? So if you look at reports, Kia and Hyundai are usually almost always topped, right up at the top. Mm -hmm. Usually with Lexus and Toyota and other big expensive brands. Um, now in the past, I will not, I will say they were not perfect, and sometimes there's still a bad reputation with those past vehicles. But if you look into Kia and Hyundai now, their vehicles have changed and they've changed a lot. Yeah, I mean, if we look at recalls in the last, let's say two years from what I know, I mean, reported many issues. I wouldn't say there were many at all. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about Kia and Hyundai is they're gonna let you know if there's an issue with a recall. Yeah, so and it's a recall, exactly. exactly. But as for just regular issues, no, I mean, no, nothing consistent that I can say like, yeah, there's a ton of issues. A lot better in the last few years and obviously they've kind of increase the caliber of their design, their build, everything else too, which you obviously can see. I mean, uh, they're racking up a lot of good rewards. Uh, and like you said, right, we're up there, right? We're in the top three for a car in its class too. Um, when, when are the PHEVs coming? So an update for 2024 and plug-in hybrids for the Tucson. Uh, timeline, I don't have exactly, but, oh, sorry, there's so many things coming in. <laughs> I, I get distracted easily. What was I on about? The PHEVs. Yes. Now we only have one trim level for PHEV and that is the ultimate. So before you used to be able to get the luxury as a PHEV, now it is just straight hybrid. Mm -hmm. So that's a little update. Canadian interest rates for a new car. Interest rates across the board are high in North America mm -hmm. right now. And that's because of the way the economy is doing. Uh, Prince said, Gabby, please tell the world one last time that your favorite SUV is the Sorento. My favorite Kia SUV is absolutely the Sorento. More specifically, the SX Turbo, or the SX model with the turbo engine. Um, let's see, which Sportage and Tucson trims offer heads-up display? So for the Sportage, none of them do, which I'm very sad about. For the Tucsons, do any of them? No, <laughs> no. I was trying to think if the 24 had it in Ultimate, Just but Speaking no. of like the Santa Fe. No, yeah. yeah, the Santa Fe has it, the, the Palisade has it, um, Sonata. Ultimate would have it too, but no, not the Tucson or the Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're built pretty much the same, uh, but they don't have it. Um, something I want to talk about is, obviously I haven't worked at Kia my entire life. I'm, I haven't been around that long, um, but I have always driven Kias. So my mom's been working for the company for almost 20 years and I am around the 20 year old mark. My first vehicle was a 2007 Kia Magentis, which was the uh, predecessor of the Optima. So kind of a full size or intermediate size sedan. And we had that vehicle up until just a couple years ago. It ran like a tank, nothing would kill it. We wanted to get rid of it so bad, it would not die until it did. <laughs> but yeah. it, it was really, really old. Um, and then we got a Kia Optima, which I still have to this day. It has about 250,000 kilometers on it. It still runs. We just have no use for it anymore. So it's parked at our house. Um, and now I drive a Forte, so. At the end of the day, well, that's a waste, just parked at your house. At well, the <laughs> <laughs> I had to chirp that. At the end of the day, guys, it's all about how you maintain your vehicle. I've yeah. seen guys buy, you know, Benzes, you know, blah, 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 whatever class, you know, C63s, and they drive it, you know, and they don't, like, yeah. they, they do the cheapest you could do, fix for it, and that car goes, right? You maintain your cars, obviously, you're going to get life out of them. I mean, every brand has its thing, but... Yeah. You know, I will say, Hyundai. like when it comes to yeah. maintenance, I'm very hard on maintenance. I mm -hmm. make sure it's done exactly. because I work at the dealership. It's convenient. I take my car to work. It gets done. It is what it is. But if you take one thing from this video, other than the fact that the N line is a great vehicle and now it's a hybrid, it's maintain your cars, please. Yes, that is all. I, I drive <laughs> at least fifty different brands 
make model trims of cars a month, easily, easily, mm. because I shoot them, I, I deal with all the pre-owned inventory. Um, super impressed with anything 18 and over Hyundai Kia, for yeah. sure. And I would take that home over competitive brands, just because of how much you get in it, right? And, and how many features you get in it. So that, that's just personal experience. Um, and then I think I'll answer this question as our last question. Ronak asked, how many kilometers have you driven in your Kia Forte? I've had it for just over a year now and it is almost at 40,000 kilometers. I believe it's at 38,000 and change. I, I drive it a lot, <laughs> every <Yeah>. day. <laughs> All right, thanks again for watching. We hope to see you in tomorrow's live video. If there's any questions you may have that we did not get the chance to answer in today's live portion of the video, please comment it down below and then we can always go back and answer it as long as we got the answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then uh, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Thanks again. Bye-bye.